there is that specific thing that you are born to do or to accomplish. Uh, when we see manufacturers, when they manufacture something, let's say an example of phones, it has a specific duty that it, it has to do. So that is the same, same way we as Christians, we have a definite purpose. We have that one thing uh, that God created us to fulfill. So uh, one of the definitions is the necessity that influenced your creation. By the way, we are not accidents of creations. We need to understand that. God had a plan for us before he created us. He had a defined plan for us. Number two, it is the desire that you are designed and created to fulfill for the creator. And for us as born again people, what we should fulfill for the creator is to worship, to honor, and to glorify him. That is our greatest purpose as believers, as a, them who are called children of God. To worship, to honor, and to glorify him. And with this, we need to glorify him with everything, including our lives and everything that we find to do. Number three, it is the assignment, mission, or duty that you are created to fill. That particular duty you are designed to pour your life's labor, energy, and time into. For example, we have people who are called to be prophets. That is their purpose. We have teachers. We have counselors. So that, that, that one thing that you give your entire time, that one thing that you give your energy, that is your purpose. Number four, it is the worth, benefit, and value of your existence, both to divinity and humanity. How do you influence the people around you? Praise the Lord. It is the value of your existing. When uh, you are around people, how do you influence them? What are the values that you are adding to the people around you? What is the gain or profit of your existence? Ama we ni mwenye tu kiwa tu kwa watu, like, if you are there, whether you are there or not, there is no difference. Bwana yesu asifiwe. Yeah, that is our purpose. How do we influence lives around us? Maybe let's say that, that, that there are people, maybe when they are uh, they're in places where people need encouragement, they are very good at that point. When people are in hopeless situations, they give hope to them. That is their purpose. It does not mean that it has to be a very bigger thing. Bwana yesu asifiwe. That little thing that you do to the people around you, that, that little thing that you even do to give joy to the people around you, that little thing that you do to rest hope, hope to the people around you, that is your purpose to those people at that point. Uh, when you have a look at uh, the story of Joseph, by the way, as we this cast this, uh, I'll base my sermon mainly on the story of Joseph. When we read the book of uh, Genesis 39 and verse 5, we'll get to see how existence of Joseph in Potiphar's house influenced them. What was his purpose in that house? As much as uh, he was sold by his brothers and then he found himself in uh, Potiphar's house, what influence did Joseph bring? So from the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So 
Joseph was not just there, like just as a mere man who was put in charge of Potiphar's house. But his existence brought a lot of blessings into Potiphar's house. What value do you add to the people around you? Are they receiving curses because of your existence? Or are they receiving blessings because of your existence? What they are having, are they multiplying because you are existing there? Because one thing we, uh, with Joseph, wherever he went, the hand of the Lord was with him. And this made even the people around him to receive God's blessings. What are you fearing? So that, that influence, that value, that profit, that which people gain from you, that which you pour your life energy and that which you do, that is your purpose. It's the outcome, stock, the end product of achievements of our existence. It is the comprehensive program of God for your life on earth. Bona Yesu asifiwe. Yes, atukuwekwa uli uku uli mwengi uni just to be there. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord placed us here with a purpose. For born again people, one of our key purpose is to draw those unbelievers to the kingdom of God. Bona Yesu asifiwe. That when they see us, when we exist, when we talk to them, when we relate to them, our lives should motivate them to come and join this kingdom. Yes, to leave that kingdom of darkness and come unto this kingdom. And we serve God together. The Bible says it's normally a joy in heaven when just one single sinner turns away from their wickedness and come to the righteousness of God. Yes, so as we exist, how are we influencing the lives around us? We can even ask ourselves this question. We know we have people who are here in fourth year, we have the third years. Since you came here, how many people have turned from their wicked ways and got born again just because of you, just because of that which you shared with them, just because of what they saw in you? I don't want that answer. But just do a self-reflection. So, uh, when we say it's the outcome, you know, uh, when we live, there is something that we are looking forward to. And uh, this thing will only achieve it after we serve our purpose here on earth well. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want us to, to project the book of 2 Timothy. Najwa tunapenda kuitumia sana kwa matanga, Second Timothy, hmm? Second Timothy, four six to eight. Tunapenda kuitumia sana kwa matanga. So inanza, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hold up, Okidogo. So when we say, like, I've fought the good fight, you've kept the faith and finished the race. That means you've lived your purpose to the fulfillment. That is when you can have the confidence of saying that word. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Walijua kwa matanga watu na itumianga tu ata kwa mtu mwenye wawa kwa wizi. But to just attach the verse there. He has fought the good fight. He has kept the faith. So we ask ourselves, which faith has he kept? Which fight has he fought? So this, we can confidently say this. Once we've lived our purpose to fulfillment, that's when I can have the confidence to say, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. Continue. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for this, for his appearing. So when we serve our purpose well, there is that end product. 
Praise the Lord. Yes, there is something that we are working towards as Christian. We, do, we are not just living merely. Huh? So what you know, even and hell is real. So as a Christian, as I, uh, as I live my purpose here on earth, as I, as I influence life, I should have a focus that there is something that I'm looking toward to. Bona yesu as you feel. So those are the few definitions. I said, the next thing, how do we get to understand our purpose? By the way, understanding our purpose, sometimes it can be a difficult thing to just to get to know, what was I created for? What should I do? How should I even do it? Sometimes you even try to move, but you're just stuck. There is nothing that is moving. But one of the key things is uh, salvation. Get born again. Praise the Lord. You know, God is the designer of our lives. He's the creator. He's the one who knows what he designed me to do. And unless I have that personal relationship with him, I'll not get to know my purpose. Yes, the one who has designed something is the one who knows what this thing is meant for. He's the one who has the manual on how this thing should be used. So you need to get born again. Have that personal relationship with God. That personal walk with God. Don't just talk of a God that you've heard from somebody. But I just was At you, you hear Austin is saying, oh, I was here, I'm born again, the Lord has been faithful. So you walk with the testimony of Austin. But I just was You need to get to know this God for yourself in person. Have that personal relationship with him. And he's the one who will direct your life. He's the one who will give you purpose. God is the author of our lives and he knows what is best for us, what we're supposed to do. Because purpose is generally, what am I supposed to do on earth? Number two, keep yourself in God's word. Uh, everything that is designed has a manual on how to use it. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Wangapi walinua simu yao bila manual on how to use it? See, the phone has a manual. When you buy a laptop, it has a manual. So everything has a manual on how to use it. And for us, as Christian, where we can get even to know what we're supposed to do and how to do it, is by immersing ourselves in God's word. Praise the Lord. The book of Joshua 1.8 reminds us, let this book of law not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night. What are you meditating on? What are you meditating on? Yes, we are here. We really need to, to know what we are supposed to do. But I know we as youths, I would say there we are called Gen Zs. There are a lot of things that has occupied our minds. Praise the Lord. We take much of our time on social media. TikTok, we shoot a lot of videos and posts, and then we, you get the likes and the comments. Wow, that was nice. Praise the Lord. But for you to get to know your purpose, be a good reader of God's word. Here in the Christian Union, we are normally taught on the CBR. Practice it. It will speak to you. Maybe you are still under confusion. Oh, should I go to the ministry of prophecy? Should I go to the teaching? Am I called to giving counsel? Where am I called to? You know, when you get to read God's word, it will speak to you. Praise the Lord. Because through God's word, that is how God speaks to us. That is the only way God speaks to us. Number three. I said uh, when I was starting, understanding purpose sometimes can be difficult. It's not very, very easy. Yes, we can battle with it. You can move from one to another, one thing to another. We have even people here in campus, 
Kuna mwenye alikuwa anasema kitambo mimi cause nimekuja kufanyia tu mzazi then I'll come and do mine. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kumaanisha even what they are doing currently is not what they wanted. Praise the Lord. So it's not an easy thing. So what we should do? Pray for wisdom and discernment. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uh, let's project the book of Psalms 57 and verse 2. Just pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom from above. I know knowledge we can read the book and get to understand. But wisdom only God can give us. But I just trust you. I cry out to God most high. To God who vindicates me. Ebu Eka Amplified. Do you have Amplified version? Could amplified. Hmm? I project the book of James 1 5, 1 verse 5 to 6. Let me get from my Bible the book of Psalms. The Bible says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yes, for us to understand our purpose, as much as it's that difficult, we should pray for God to give us wisdom. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I know when we have wisdom within you, it will direct, it will show you this. This is the path that I really need to follow. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. However much the path might be confusing. But when the Lord gives you his wisdom and the spirit of discernment, you'll be in a position to get to know this is where I'm supposed to go. This is the route I'm supposed to take. This is what the Lord is calling me to do. When I yes, was if you were. I'm getting the book of Psalms 57. Since maybe I captured it wrongly. The next thing, uh, we should prioritize doing God's will. Live a Christ-centered life. The Bible reminds us in the book of Matthew 6, 33 to 34. See, we are good Bible scholars. Without projection, what does that verse say? Hmm? Seek the kingdom of God and, and every other thing. Every other thing. Even that confusing purpose. Every other thing will be. But I guess if you will. Yeah, let's prioritize doing God's will in our life. I know God's will and purpose also sometimes it's a bit difficult. But I used to ask you, you sometimes ask yourself, what is God's will for my life? What is God's plan for my life? Why do I exist? Why was I created? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I'm just moving, but I don't know why I exist. And I've told us we are not accident of God's creation. He created us with a purpose. So let's live a Christ-centered life. Let everything that we do reflect Christ. Let our speech reflect Christ. I remember sometimes back when I was in my first year, and Ruben here was uh, the leader of praise and worship ministry. And he could tell us that uh, praise and worship is not that one thing that you come and do on Friday and on Sunday. When I was it is a lifestyle. When people see you, when you talk to them, when you uh, interact with your classmates, is that Hosanna that you lift your hands to worship being seen in you? 
without actually testifying that I'm born again. Bona Yesu asifiwe. So let God's will, let uh, our lives be centered in Christianity. Let it uh, try to depict how Christ lived. Bona Yesu asifiwe. Yeah, Jesus Christ used to pray, used to fellowship with others. He used to fast. Praise the Lord. Number, th uh, I think that is number four, number five. Uh, another, uh, another easy way maybe that can help us to identify our purpose, pay attention to your passions, gifts, and strength. That one thing that you really find joy doing. You know, we have uh, people, when they are in a place where people are singing, they get a lot of joy. We have people uh, when maybe there is an argument, they give counsel. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have people whom their work, you can come to them, you are very devastated, you are stressed up. Like you just at that moment, you just want, like you're just thinking of maybe taking your life. But when they come to you, you find the meaning of life again. But I was a few so these little things that we find joy doing, these things that give us peace when we do them, pay attention to them. Praise the Lord. Yeah, those gifts, I've said, Papa, see, like it Maybe it's just that little thing. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that, just that little thing. So pay attention. Like when uh, we look at uh, Paul, who has written most of the books in the New Testament, he was so passionate about reaching the Gentiles with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that was his purpose. That is why like, he's writing to the church in Corinth. Praise the Lord. The Ephesians, name them all. That was his passion. That is, that is was what gave him joy after his transformation. He had been a persecutor of Christians, but once he, show, uh, uh, he found that light, he said, I want to share this light with the people around me. Uh, next, take a solitude retreat. That is, take an hurried time to think. Pray and ask for God's direction and listen to his voice. Uh, you know, normally the problem with us human beings, we want things to be done very fast. Praise the Lord. Maybe let's say you want to get born again today and you're like, God, uh, I'll proclaim salvation. What now do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Where have I been accepted in my life? If you've not given me anything to do, take that unhurried time, that quiet time. Praise the Lord. Pray and seek God. Ask him for direction. He is the one who has the direction for our lives. Let's not be so quick. Let's not be in a hurry. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Wow, that's the manga. Hurry, hurry. has a No? has no blessings. So that is the problem with us. Like we just want it to be done now and now. If it takes even one day, then God sees not to be God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, he's still God. When we are, uh, I said we'll base our discussion on the life of Joseph. Joseph began to, to dream at the age of 17 of him ruling. But when uh, the time that this dream came to fulfillment, it was when Joseph was 30 years of age. He took 13 good years. 13. But he had to ya naokoka leo. Mungu mi nataka kufungua kanisa. Nendeleze uduma. Wana yesu asifiwe. Ha? 
unachukua ile kavasi yako moja hmm? Jesus wept praise the lord and you want to run with that huh bora yesu asifiwe let's let's be patient sometimes these things are delaying because god is saying when i give lavenda this ministry then pride will get into her and instead of maybe even bringing people to my kingdom it will be more of herself huh? lavenda's ministry lavenda this lavenda this lavenda that bona yesu asifiwe so let's take time let's pray let's seek god let's wait upon him to give us the direction the path of our lives you know sometimes even when we finish campus Yes, so much, so much in a hurry. But by the way, when you come from Christian Union, especially like this one, you're normally on fire, huh? burning for Christ. Umefanya CBR, huh? best P. Umefunza vinyo neza tengeneza salmon, if law, huh? na ihitro ya watu. Huh? Umekua in all the ministries. When you wako e-teams, you've been going for missions, unapewa crusade, unavuma, buwana yesu wasifiwe. And then you get out of this place, huh? praise the Lord. Huh? You get out of this place, you take three people. Mnanza ministry. Maybe that which you are doing is not even what God designed you for. You are living out of your purpose. You find that the ministry is stagnating. It is not moving. The way you began with three people, there is no growth. Mwana yesu asifiwe. So let's always pray. Let's seek God. Let's not be in a hurry. Um, the next thing, just trust in God. I've said and I'll repeat this again. He's the one who created us. He's the one who has our manual. He's the one who knows what you're supposed to do. And by the way, we said all of us have to be preachers. <laughs> but I used to see fear. Who said all of us have to be preachers? See, nobody said. And uh, you know, normally, almost everyone is uh, running for easy ministries and you know, they can go pulpit. And you could sell out to people they can't see you. And there is, even these things of just giving counsel. Just talking to people. Just encouraging people. Praise the Lord. Uh, the book of Psalms 23, that is his trusting in God. The Bible tells us he's our shepherd. And a shepherd knows what is best for the sheep. Praise the Lord. Si kwa wale wenye tunachunga kondo, si unajua kondo wangu akikula plastic itakuwa mbaya. So unampea what is beneficial to them. He makes us line uh, greener pastures. He gives us still waters. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So as our greatest shepherd, he knows what is best for us. So let's just trust in him. Let's not uh, trust our knowledge, our understanding our own selves, more than we trust in God. Yes, for us to just to get uh, to understand what he created us for. 
Let's put our trust in him. Yes, for them who have been asking whether they are in their purpose, whether they are living their purpose, whether they are doing that which God created them for. How do we get to know when we are out of our purpose? How do you get to know that you are living out of that which God created you to do? Number one, you are bluntly living a sinful life. Like there is nothing in you that is even uh, warning you against sin. You eat it like food. You take it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, for supper. Adi umuke sa sita ya usiku. Ukule dhambi tena. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. So when, uh, when like sin has become a normal thing in your life, then for you as a believer, you are out of your purpose. You are not living for that which God created you for. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. And by the way, um, what has made even most of the people when we read the Bible to not to fulfill their purpose. Ni dhambi tu. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. Zigine dongo dongo kama disobedience. Somebody like Saul was made to be, to rule over Israel forever. But he disobeyed God. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. It's okay. He disobeyed God. And with this disobedience, God rejected him. And he appointed another person in his place. Number two, you lack, you lack direction. Nothing excites you. Yet you. You just have nothing you're working towards. When anything comes your way, you just do it. You are born again a Christian. Wakita fresh as bash, unanguka na ye. Bwana yesu asifiwe. Wakikuwa pale, when you were on side Zamatema, I was living that side. Kisikia wanaonja kakitu, unanguka na ayo. Bwana yesu asifiwe. Like you don't have any direction. Nothing is exciting you in this life. Bwana yesu asifiwe. So when, when you see your life is uh, without direction, then most probably chances are so high. You are not living your purpose. Like you're just moving from one thing to another without progress. Let's talk of ministry. Today you've joined Asharin. Hmm? Kesho, unasikia ni kama unaitua kuimba. Unaenda kuimba. Kesho kutua, praise the Lord. Hmm? Kesho kutua, uko catering. Unasikia kama mwito ya kupika, ni mingi sana. Bora yesu wa sifiwe. Like, you don't have progress. You're just moving let me see, even when you when you tumia jiriwa, leo uko kwa hii kampuni unasema ah sijaona umi move next sija acha nijaribu education kuna wengine tumefanya actual science na unajiambia i can do a postgraduate uh, degree in uh, education like there is nothing that is exciting you're just moving from one place to another uh, uh, when you are at that moment then most probably you are not living your purpose I think my time is almost coming to an end. Number three, you don't feel much fulfillment in life. Next, you don't find joy and excitement in what you are doing. One of, uh, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy. But uh, let me just use the ministries because we, na, we, we are in a Christian union setup. Uko intercessory, but ni kama unasikumwa, like, this thing is not coming from within. Bwana yesu asifiwe. Ata wakita maombi, intercessory leader, a call, a seme leo, tuda meet bush, yani unajivuta tu, you are not excited about it. Bwana yesu asifiwe. When you are leaving your purpose, then you need not even to be reminded that you are supposed to do this thing. Praise the Lord. So when uh, you lack joy in that which you are doing, in that ministry that you are in, as much as you are in fourth year, you are in third year, and you've been there, it is not giving you joy. It is not coming from within your heart. Then you better go back 
in a solitude retreat, unhurried time, pray and ask God. Am I really supposed to be here? Because you can get out of this place, you've never gotten joy, then you graduate, you go outside there, you become even more confused. You don't know even what you're supposed to do. Uh, this is for us who are working. Some of us just to work so that we can save for our retirement. Our true joy comes from those things outside job. Una say, acha nitoke job. Let me go and watch a movie. That is what to give you joy. But in your place of work, una say, acha niende uyu boss kazi, by the way. Ame, ame tu senya, ana tu sumbua, bwara yesu asifiwe. So even for us who are working, when we just like, akuna ile self-drive, inner drive, then maybe even that work that you are doing, it was not meant for you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yeah. Uh, very first, we'll move to importance of understanding purpose. Uh, it helps us direct life's energy, time, and resources to what really matters. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yeah, once you understand your purpose, you'll not waste your energy. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll read at our own time, Philippians 3, 13 to 14. When you have a distracted life, then def def definitely know it is a purposeless life. Number two, it delivers people from wrong companionship and relationship. You can't just be anywhere with anyone. If these people are not driving you towards your purpose, then you can just... Put them aside. But some of us, we are just in uh, companies. There is no way they are directing our lives. That which we really desire to do, there is no way they are motivating us towards that. But we, we are just stuck with them. Praise the Lord. Once you understand your purpose, it will deliver you from wrong companionships. It delivers us from imitation and competition. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ujua like Christian normally tuko na competition sana ama imitation. Huh? Wewe unataka tu ufanye tu venye pasi, pasi nani anafanya? Pasi yupi ni nini? T pastor, team wangi. Like you just want to be team wangi. You don't want to be yourself. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Huyo ni T and uh, Derek is Derek. Be yourself. Don't compete with one another. When we are reading about the, the gifts, no gift is greater than any other. They are meant to serve one person. So when, once you understand your purpose, you will not compete with anyone. You will not imitate. You will just be yourself. Uh, and that will read us later. Second Cor Corinthians 10, 12. That is teaching us about the gifts. Joel 2, 7. Number four, it fuels pursuit and persistence in life. Once you know why you exist, once you know your purpose, you'll be persistent in pursuing it. Yeah, like you'll have something that is driving you. Because you know this is what I want to do. No matter the challenges, no matter what I'll go through, I'll have to pursue it to the end. With uh, not only that, there is that crown of righteousness. That is awaiting us. It also delivers us from regrets over wasted life. Praise the Lord. Because uh, when you analyze, since you were born, maybe right now you are around 20, 23, some are 40, 50, like there is nothing meaning, meaningful you've done. There is nothing meaningful you've achieved. That is because you didn't know your purpose from the beginning. So once we understand it, we won't have that regret. We'll have that confidence to say what Second Timothy says. I have fought the good fight. It also delivers us from the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, and uselessness in life. Uh, we'll get to read the book of Psalms 42. 
5, Proverbs 14. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ha. Nimebaki na minutes ngapi ama zimeisha? Zimeisha? Okay, we are uh, almost coming to a close. I'll go through this uh, very fast. Uh, some of the hindrances, uh, comparing our lives to others, lack of persistence, pride. Some of us get so excited with our achievements until we forget the purpose. Fear of the unknown or failure. Sometimes you want to begin but you know, you don't know the outcome. So some, some of us, yes, we've uh, identified our purpose. But we really have this fear. What of if it fails? We've talked of sin, impatience. We force things instead of waiting on God. Tukiangalia Abraham, he was promised a son. But being that God took some time. Alifanya nini? Alijijazia akatafuta? Huh? Akatafuta akapata? Akapata Ishmael. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But that was not the plan of God. So normally we are very impatient, impatient. Lack of self-control. When we Check at Esau. Imagine Esau selling his birthright just for food. How many of us have uh, sold our purpose, ama our destinies, ama the things that we are meant to achieve just because of these small, small things, lust of the eyes, food. You are in job, unaona loophole, ya corruption, umeingia hapo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yeah, so that, that is really hindering us to really uh, achieve, ama fulfill our purpose, even after understanding it. Lack of quality association. The companies we keep. Hmm? Bad company ruins. Good moral. A lack of enough support from the family and friends. When we read the book of Matthew 10, 35, 39, it's talking about uh, following Jesus. Walking and living for Jesus. And it reminds us that you, sometimes it even calls for you to leave your family aside. When, uh, when we look at the story of Joseph, when uh, he told his dream to the brothers, did they motivate him? They never supported him. So sometimes some of us Yes, you know, uh, um, I'm called, and this is the calling, I'm called even to, to, to ministry. Though we are told there is nothing called full-time ministry. Even in our places of work, we are still ministers. And you go and share with your parents. Ama when you are on stem, and the parents are like, ah, no, kijana wetu, mm-mm. Auta enda hapa, tumekusomesha, wende utafute, kazi. So when we lack that support from family, some, some of us, because of those things that we are doing, we even lost some of our friends. So those are sometimes hindering some purposes to, to, be, to be fulfilled. So I uh, think the time is over. Uh, from the story of Joseph, I want us just to ask ourselves this question as we come to the close. In uh, whatever you are pursuing, can people really say God is with you? Because uh, when uh, Joseph was in Potiphar's house, even Potiphar could say that this man, God is with him. Can really people say that? That what you are doing, God is with you and you have favor? Yeah, because we can be pursuing a lot of things, but if we don't have favor before God and before the sights of men, then uh, it also won't work well with us. Sometimes when we are pursuing our purpose, we might be uh, victims of false accusations, just as Joseph was accused falsely until he found himself to the prison. Yeah, sometimes in your place of work, you can really be living for God. You don't want even to 
to find yourself in things to do with bribe and corruption, but they will still accuse you falsely. Yeah, so may the Lord really help us to, to get to know our purpose, to understand our purpose, to live rightly. Yeah, so uh, as we come to the close, I'll uh, invite that Paul Mumina. Uh, I'll invite uh, the chair, but let me make a prayer before we conclude. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We honor you. We adore you tonight for who you are, King of all the glory. Thank you, my Father, for reminding us about our purpose, O Jehovah Lord. Thank you for reminding us, dear Lord, that uh, we can only find our purpose in you, King of Kings, my Father, Lord. How I pray that, O oh, Jehovah, Lord, you shall help us, Lord, to live for you, Lord, my Father, to live our purpose fully on earth, King of all the glory, to influence the lives around us, Lord, my Father, in accordance to thy perfect will, O oh, Jehovah, Lord. We exalt you, we honor you, we adore you because you're worthy. Receive the praises, the honor, and the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. You may conclude Maratatu.